Hey guys, real quick before we get into the episode, don't forget to like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash hella average gaming. Follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash hella average gaming, average spelled A V G. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com slash hella average gaming. Listen to us on Stitcher, check us out on iTunes, and make sure to listen to us on Google Play. And with all that said and done, let's get to it. What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 92 of the Hell Average Games Cast. Another week has come and gone, and alas, we three are still here playing video games and are going to make sure we bring all the gaming news straight to your eardrums. I've got Carmen and Jeremy with me this week. What's up, boys? How's the week been? It's been good. Can't complain. You know, same shit, different toilet. Yeah, that's, that's about, about, about for me. How about you, Jeremy? Pretty damn busy. I haven't had much game time myself. Been doing the work thing. Step it up. Hey, some of us are adults. We may not look like adults, but we're adults. We've had this conversation before, Jeremy, and work is overrated, and you need to play more video games. Oh, exactly. Well, I believe me. I understand. Cam, get this man a regular old 9 to 5. <laughs> but, but see, the, this, that's the cash that's the cash way, too, because if one does not work, one cannot afford video games. You're right. You're right. Yes. It's a vicious cycle, isn't it? It just is, man. So we're here. We're going to talk about video games because you said you didn't get a lot in, but that means you did get some in. So I, I have yeah. faith that you've got something to talk about. Mm-hmm. Uh, but while you're collecting your thoughts, I'm going to get with Carmen and figure out what he's been playing this week. So let the world know, Carm. Well, I've been rocking out on Rocket League some more. Uh, we got a ton of Apex in. Um, I'm convinced that... We're just a very bad squad together, me, you, and Will. <laughs> because like nothing, like nothing we do is right when we're together. And then I play with blueberries, and I'm knocking motherfuckers, and I'm getting kills. And it's like I'm I'm actually feeling good about the game. And then I get on with you guys, and I feel terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Such a bad cycle. Yeah, it's so terrible. And then uh, what else have I been playing? I think that's about it. Um, I haven't gotten back into Hollow Knight. Um, I almost started playing Guacamelee 2 again and working on that. Platinum, but I just said nah. So other than that, I've, I mean, I'm still doing my little mobile game. My little Tap Titans, even though it's losing its steam. Uh-oh, Tap Titans losing its luster. Oh, it took 10 years, man. Yeah, it's just getting it's just getting stale and they're taking too long to put out an update that they've been hyping. Is it a pretty big update though? Yeah, it's supposed to be a game yeah, it's supposed to be a really big update for uh, clans and stuff. So we will see. They gotta they gotta get it moving though. Yeah, they're gonna lose like their best customer if you stop playing. Nah, I don't. I mean, I don't spend that much. I mean, I thought you'd been half your paycheck each week on micros. Yeah, okay. on tappity taps and whatnot. Yeah. You're not going hard on it like that. Nah, every once in a while, a little thirty piece. When they got bundles. Only when they got bundles. I got you, I got you. So kind of a, a normal week for you, it sounds like, Carmen. Yeah, nothing special. I'm waiting for the division. It drops in a week or so. About a week we'll be slumming it out in Washington, D.C. Let's get it. Jeremy, what about you, buddy? Tell us what games you did get to play. Well, I guess I'm the only one playing a new game this week. I think you are the only yeah. one playing a new game yeah. this week. So tell me about it. Picked up a lesser-known indie title called uh, Devil May Cry 5. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. No one has. Apparently, it's the fifth one in the series. You know. Wow, it took that long for you to get it? I, I guess. But, uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I uh, picked it up on Friday. Hadn't had too much chance to play it. I was actually playing it a little before the podcast started. Uh, I'm only on, like, mission four, I think. But uh, from what I played so far, uh, this might be my favorite Devil May Cry yet. Wow, big, yeah. big accolades. It's really damn good. Ah, shit. Carm, you gotta stop texting me, boy. You're the only one that doesn't put their phone on silent. I had it on silent, but I had to turn it back on because you bitches was, I can't get it here until late. It's all Carmen's fault, trust me. It had nothing to do with me. Yes. 
okay. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Back to Jeremy. They asked. Anyway. Yeah, I was playing some of it, and uh, this might be my favorite Devil May Cry 5. Uh, Devil May Cry yet. Uh, there's three playable characters you can play as Dante, of course. Nero's back, and uh, there's a new character named V, who looks like a uh, skinny Chris Angel. A uh, skinny Chris Angel. I'm not even joking. First time I he walked on screen, I was like, oh, hey, Chris Angel. You're going to hear the freak my mind, you little mind freak? But all right, uh, all right. he... he uh, he is very much unlike Dante and Nero. He doesn't do the fighting himself, but he's got like uh, like spectral animals or something, like a, a demon bird and a demon panther, and they do the fighting for him. And he just stands back and like sends them out to do their you know do their thing. Uh, like uh, I was, there was a scene where uh, Nero just got done killing a big ass King Kong sized demon, and then he just you know, walks in, and his little panther buddy shows up, and he just lunges at him and turns into a saw blade and just cuts the thing in half. I was like, that's pretty sweet. Wow. But, that yeah. sounds dope as fuck. It is. Uh, I've been playing as Nero mostly. Uh, the first couple missions, you can only play as Nero. Uh, he plays just like he did back in Devil May Cry 4, but he doesn't have his demon arm. Uh, he got it taken away and say he's got like a prosthetic arm. And you can get different kinds of prosthetic. They all function the same. They still let him do that grapple move where, you know, where he can like reach out and grab an enemy. But they all have different alternate attacks they can do. Like uh, one has like an electrocution punch. One can shoot out like a laser. One shoots out like an exploding rocket punch. But once you do these, they break and explode and you have to replace it. And you can carry like up to, uh, once you upgrade your inventory, you can carry up to eight of them at one time. And you can find more in the environment. You can buy more. Uh, I don't like it as much as the demon arm. They are kind of cool. It does get some variety. But I mostly don't even use the alts. I just stick the, uh, like, dragon enemies towards me. His other movesets are more than enough to crush anything in his way. Uh, I also really like, uh, the, uh, in-between shops that you go to. Like, in the other stages, it's just, um, a menu, but this time, uh, Nero is actually traveling with his companion, Nico, who is this, like, uh, chain-smoking girl with a heavy southern accent. And she drives your, like, getaway van, and it's got like a little setup in there, and she can just build you all your shit. I like how she and Nero just talk shit back to each other. Uh, it's pretty. There's some pretty funny fucking dialogue between them. Uh, and God, I'm just really liking this so far. Early impressions. How many? Uh, what's the rating? What's the bags of dicks? Oof. Right now, it's like up, it's above Resident Evil Two, so like nine point five. Ooh. Yeah. That's yeah. flirting with a perfect game. It is. It might be a perfect game. I don't know. I gotta play more. But I'm, I'm really, really liking it. I can't find anything I really don't like about it yet. The music's fantastic. The uh, cutscenes are awesome. It's got some great, like, fucking stunts and shit going on in there. Uh, it's got a good, really good opening where, you I know, mean, I won't spoil anything, but it just does, you know, it, I think it shows, like, the main villain you're going to fight at the end and shows what a badass he is. It's got, like, a... Uh, it's got, like, this big demon tree that pops up and it's just, like, its roots are taking over this city. And you gotta, you know, clear it out and get to them. Uh, shows Dante, Lady, and Trish getting their the shit kicked in. And so, you know, you gotta rescue them. But, uh, yeah, I'm really getting into this. I'm really liking it. Now, is the villain of this one a villain we've seen before? Is it a whole new no. villain? No, they always do new villains for these okay. games. Yeah, this is a new one. I, it, they, it, he's just some demon king. But, like, when, when you literally go in there, he's just sitting on his throne. He's, like, you know, got his hand resting on his... Uh, you know, fist, and you go and attack him, and he's just st- sitting there, and you're just smashing him. You're not doing anything, and then after nice. you, you, after you like fight him long enough, he just finally like waves you away, and just you're just done. I'm like, fuck yeah, very cool, very cool. So did that take up? That's the only game you played this week. That's it. That's all I played. Very cool. I'm glad to hear you're liking it. I'm anxious to hear your updates as you get further into it. Um, so for me, as Carmen said, got a lot of Apex in. Um, we haven't won, but we're always top three, top five. I mean, we're always in the top. Um, and then when we play separately, like I was playing separately with blueberries. I mean, I was raging. I was getting two kills a game, three kills a game. Um, so whatever we're doing just isn't working as a squad. So we got to figure that out. Um, however, the game is really fun. I'm pretty, I'm having a lot of fun with the game. I want to play right now. I'm actually watching, uh, one of the TSM guys play right now. Nice. So, 
Um, I love Anthem. Like it's it's a great game. Apex. <laughs> Apex. <laughs> Why was I thinking about Anthem? I think I just read something about Anthem. I love Apex. It's a great game. Not Anthem. Anthem's a pretty bad game. I love insert random battle royale game here. Um, it is probably going to hold my attention into Division Two, and I'll probably still play every once in a while once Division Two comes out. Uh, let's see, what else did I get? I played. Oh, I bought. Uh, there's a flash sale on the PSN, and I bought Divinity: Original Sin. Uh, I've been playing some of it. That's pretty cool. Um, I'm not so far into it right now. I'm investigating a murder. I think it's like the very first like opening, uh, basically town and mission. So, uh, the best way to describe it is a top down turn based RPG. It's like oh, Diablo, yeah, but turn based. So turn based Diablo. It's the best way for me to describe it. Okay, um, I'm I remember hearing about it. It sounds so familiar, and I remember this is a game that came out last year. I think. No, that was that was the first, second one. I actually bought the first one. Oh, okay. So that was the sequel. Yeah, and the game's okay. fun. It's really cool. My actually, my boss at work got it, and he was playing it with the son, and he's like, "Man, it's so fun!" And I just happened to see it on this uh, flash sale, so I went ahead and picked it up. It's really cool. I'm really enjoying it so far. It's a nice turn-based RPG. You can get people in your party. You can really customize your character. So it's pretty cool so far. I'm really digging it. Um, played a lot of that. Uh, God, what else? Play some Tetris 99. Decided to get my ass stomped in that. How'd you do? Um, I can usually, usually get top 50, which doesn't sound good, but it's pretty tough to get into the top 50. Like it takes a little while. Um, I think the best I did was like top 20. Nice. Um, it's fun. I'm, I'm just not, I'm not good, a good Tetris player. That's for sure. But I like doing it. So it's pretty, it's a fun game. Um, yeah, I, I actually played that as well. I left that off my list. Yeah, you did pretty good. You had a good run on that first one, didn't you? Top 12, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. It, it's just a really, sim- such a simple concept. It's so fun. So well executed. Um, And then, uh, did I play anything else? Uh, yeah, some more Hitman, but I'm only, I got on the third mission, and then it just got, to me, it felt repetitive. Like, it was fun for the first two missions, like everything I was saying last week, but... I feel like it's just repetitive on every mission, so kind of that kind of fell to the wayside a little bit. But I'm glad I played it. I mean, it was a cool game, really cool mechanics. You could kill people a lot of ways, but I think other games are gonna sneak in and take a little bit more precedence. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, well you know can't beat free. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's the best part about it. Yeah, like that. That uh, again, that'll hold you over till Division comes out. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, that was that was it. I think. I think that was it. So I got a good amount of gaming in, actually. Oh, I played some uh, NBA 2K Playgrounds, too. That's fun. I went ahead and just bought the whole roster. Because that's what I do. I like playing with people. Whoever I want to play with. And then Will roasted your ass for it. Yeah, our buddy Will was like, we'll support the playing the game. And I was like, playing the game? And he was like, no, the point of playing the game is I like the characters. And I was like, I don't know. I think the point of playing the game is having fun. So I think it remains to be... Receive, you know, who cares? There's still a whole lot to do in the game. A whole lot of fun things. Like three-point shootouts that are hard as fuck. Carmen said he was real good at him. No, I was terrible. I don't. I didn't have any characters. I was shooting threes with some, some bozo. Yeah, I picked uh, the best three-point shooter in the game. It still sucked. So. But yeah, that was about it. Got a lot of... Kind of went all over the map with my game and stuff. It was fun. Had a good week. Good. Uh, but if that's it, we're going to jump right into the news. So, it's time for some news. All right. We don't have a whole lot this week, guys. we got about six topics to go over. Uh, some pretty good ones, though. we got some good topics. <clears throat> um, let's kick it off with some E3 talk. EA decided they're not going to do a press conference at E3 this year. They are the second company to back out of the press conference. Now, EA is going to be there, but they're just going to do their EA play, set up their booths. They're not doing their normal press conference. So just another nail in the coffin, if you ask me. Yep, rest in peace, E3. Slowly Seriously. but surely, it's coming. Like I guarantee you, I, I think by next year, if um Sony doesn't come back, EA is going to drop out. And I think... I don't know, Ubisoft might drop out. 
Nintendo would definitely drop out. It might just be the Microsoft press conference. That Nintendo keeps is going. out at E3 already, basically. Well, they half ass. They're still technically there, but they half ass it. They do their direct, so they basically like I think they film them elsewhere, like elsewhere. Yeah, yeah, they don't care. They, there's like we have to have e presence at E3, so they just go, okay, here's some amiibos and shit. Our real stuff will be at the direct. Yeah, I mean it's it's slowly deteriorating. Um, we did read, and I, I didn't put this on the list, but we can talk about it. Devolver Digital is going to be there, so that's kind of cool because I don't think they were there last year, but they're not announcing any new games. So says their Twitter. Then what the fuck are you showing up for? I don't know. If you're not a console, like if you don't have a console or a game, where are you going? Yeah, like I don't, I don't want to hear about all the things that are already coming through your pipes that you've already announced. Like I understand, I understand you have to show us these things, and everybody does. Ubisoft does, EA does. It's like we know all these things are happening. It's like we know there's going to be a new Just Dance. We know there's going to be a new Madden, a new FIFA, a new mechanic in their engine. You know what are EA's using? What Frostbite now? Yeah, so it's like they're going to show the the new things they can do with Frostbite if they were going to be there. But like, if you're not bringing like when they had Anthem, they could bring Anthem to the show. Or if you have the Division Two, you can bring the Division Two. But what if you're not bringing Heat? Like, there's no point in doing this. I agree. Yeah, like if you're not bringing if you're not bringing something new, or if you don't have like a bunch of development on a game that's coming out, like you know, if like Square Enix is just like comes in and is like, yeah, we got the Final Fantasy VII Remake, it'll be out by the end of the year. That would be a big hit. That'd be a big drop. That would blow the doors off the fucking yeah. place. Yeah, but if they just come in and say, yeah, we're still working on it. We got no footage or nothing, but it's still in the works. I'm like, well, here's a, here's a title thanks for screen. wasting our time. Now here's a, here's a number seven. Yeah, here's a seven. Uh, yeah, We're going to re-release it again for the 15th time uh, on your refrigerator. So, <laughs> you know. But, lo- but look at this. We released it for the Samsung refrigerators. Yeah. I'd buy well, it. But I really, I really think they might be just getting off the E3 thing because a lot of people, like the last several E3s, have been just letdowns. Like I, I would even so go so far as to say E3 for me has been a letdown. Ever the last really good one was that year that Sony like melted the internet when they announced like the Final Fantasy VII remake and Shenmue yeah. and the Last Guardian. That was an amazing was E3. One. Everyone since then has just been let. That it's just been eh, just just meh all the way through. Yeah, that was probably the best E3 in the last few years. And I think it's honestly, it would make for better shows if, like, Microsoft, Nintendo, and Sony, and EA, and all them, if they just, like, like they just do, like, they're planning to do, I guess now, where they have their own shows they do on their own time when they're ready. That way, it's just like, we have a lot of stuff to show. We will show it on July 15th or whatnot. They're not like, oh, E3's here, let's just throw some shit at the wall that we got that we're working on. You know, quality over quantity. I agree. I mean, E3 is supposed to be the biggest stage, like the biggest single stage in the video game industry. So if you're not going to bring heat, like we've been saying, don't sh- I mean, there's no point. Plus, it, it could also be, too, the fact that you have E3 and they have their own little press, you know, like their own directs. They're kind of splitting in between. Like, what you don't th- show at E3, you're going to show at your direct and vice versa. Like, why not just, just do one big, massive show? Shows everything at once. Agreed. Agreed. The overall uh, platform just needs to change. The vessel yeah. of E3 just needs to be modernized. Yeah, I agree. I mean, like, I mean, as much as I love the press conferences, not everybody cares to sit down and watch the press conferences. I, I never do. I always skip it, and then I just look at the news the next day. I watch the trailers. Because, honestly, yeah. the actual conferences themselves are pretty bad. I mean, and, and so, like, people like me, there's, I mean, I think there is a small amount of people like me who just fucking love seeing that shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, but, like, they're... You, I don't know how many people tune into E3, you know, like, are, are a lot of people watching it on Twitch and YouTube? Um, I think they are, but they're really, they just want to be the first ones to catch the new stuff. They, I, I guarantee if you polled them and said, would you rather we just show you the trailers and get down to business, or do you want to hear about all these figures, have all these people, you know, dress in stupid fucking costumes, you want to wait 30 minutes while we take everyone to a different auditorium to show one game and then bring okay, them all back? That sucked. That sucked. They would probably never do that again. Yeah, that was but a I'm, terrible, terrible thing. Oh yeah, that was that was one of their worst. But I mean, like you ask these people, they're like they would rather just these companies come out and go, "Here's this game, here's this game, here's this game, here's what we're doing." Thank you. That's it. Just move on. Uh, so let's keep an eye out on E three. See who else is going to drop out, if any. Um, I assume that's it. I mean, I think all the big ones will be there. Ubisoft will do theirs. 
Microsoft, obviously. Nintendo will have their Direct. Obviously, you'll have the PC game show. Um, and we'll see who else. Bethesda will probably be there. They've got a lot of ass-kissing and, and, and fixing. Oh, yeah. Bethesda could get laughed off the stage. Oh, they got to fix it. They got to bring heat. They got to do something. Dude, them and EA are just firing for who can fuck up the most now. I'm telling you. Let's see who can. It's like a who can break the most consoles year. It's going to be very. I'm not going to lie. I'm I'm very interested to see this year's E3 just see who did the worst between those two. Uh, Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing it's Bethesda, honestly. Wow. I mean, Anthem, Anthem is breaking a few consoles, but Bethesda really fucked up. Really, really fucked up. Well, before they can go to E3, I think they should write us all an essay. They should. As to, three as to why they should be there. <laughs> yeah, and why they like should be that. allowed to go to E3. Yeah. I just imagine that Bethesda's sitting there going, oh, like your game breaks their their PS4s? Fuck you, ours is going to make them catch on fire. <laughs> and it's going to email one-up. all their, and it's going to email all your porn to your mom. So Yeah, <laughs> yeah don't try to one-up us. Shit. Um, so let's keep on rocking. We'll keep an eye on E3. It's one of my favorite times of the year. I hate rain on the parade too much. Um, Count your days, E3. You're fucking dead. Uh, Labo. Nintendo's cardboard surprise hit. A million units, I think, we decided were sold. I wouldn't call it a hit. Is, Jeremy disagrees with that. Um, but. here there. Labo is doing a VR I don't. Is it, are they doing a headset or are they just doing VR? It's it. No, it's like, a. It, it's it, they're doing a portion, VR headset. Like it comes with a little pair of goggles that you put onto your Switch screen, and then a bunch of cardboard crap sure. you put around it to simulate VR. Uh, nope, okay. that's a whole lot of nope. Yep, I ain't. They, nope. They look fucking stupid. I the, the, I thought the original Labo looked fucking stupid, but like, there's like a camera. I'm like, okay, that's not bad. Then there's like a. A blaster, some kind of cannon thing. Oh, that's not bad either. There's an elephant. What the fuck? A bird. Uh, I'm just yeah. The piano's cool. No, that was from their first set. Yeah, yeah. I'm oh, so the there's new, other I'm things the new coming. Set. Oh, I haven't looked at all of the new set. It's like um, I think it's like three new sets. So there's like two other ones, but yeah, they're all stupid and boring looking. <laughs> like I just don't is... trust cardboard to hold my fucking. Switch. Oh God no, God no. But I mean, like the thing is, I think this is gonna do just like the the original Labo, where people are gonna buy them, they're gonna put them together and say, "Oh, it was a lot of fun to put together," and then they play the whatever program it, or their game it comes with for five minutes and then never touch it again. Yeah, but Nintendo shouldn't. Nintendo doesn't care about that. I think that's and that's that's very un Nintendo like actually, which is weird because they're usually they're that that sounds like something like Sony or Microsoft would probably do or E3 or EA no, or something. No, this is this has Nintendo written all over. It's no, a no, gimmick. I, no, that's what I'm saying. It is a gimmick. I mean like not I'm talking about the fact that they don't care. Like they usually do care about what people think of the, their company and their consoles and so forth. Yeah, but people are going to think this is brilliant. They're going to be like this is a cheap alternative to getting a VR headset and then They'll, they'll put out a good experience with it. They're not going to nah. put out a trash experience. No, no. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to not be buggy and glitchy, but it's not going to be something people are going to go like, this is the future of VR. This is what I'm going to keep coming back to. Of course not. No, that's it. They're going to play it once and then never touch it again. Yeah, but that, that doesn't matter when it's all about units sold and profit. But I'm just saying, that's, that's what I'm saying is not very Nintendo-like. They're not ones to like go for the short-term profit. They do care about their brand image, even though they fuck up a lot. I'm not saying they're not doing it. I'm just saying this is not very Nintendo-like of them. I think this is just a, a quick punch to bring revenue. And I mean, I, because they're not able to sell this, they're not able to sell some of these games for sixty dollars. Like people just aren't going to buy a, a five-year-old game for sixty dollars still. Oh yeah, and I agree with that. But uh, it's like what we were, we're talk- I was talking about earlier. I think this is also them seeing if the Labo is actually something they can keep going. Like, if it does really well, then they probably will keep making Labos. But if this does what it's been doing, they might not do anymore. Because I think they're looking for, like, they're always looking for, like, the next Switch, the next 3DS, the next Amiibo. They're looking for, like, a tent pole, something they can really, you know, sell well, make a lot of money. They're not interested in doing things that just make a little bit of money. They're really wanting to, like, hammer, like, have a, like, a big hit. And I just don't think Labo's been doing it for them. Yeah, but the the VR headset opens up quite a bit. 
it opens up a good bit for application development. But the thing is, will it? I don't think it will. I mean, like, I don't think they will develop a lot for it. No, I mean, I don't. I don't expect them to devote a lot of time to it. Maybe four no. or five things, and then yeah, maybe a sprinkle here and there. But if it exactly, if they see big numbers, they they may double down. Oh yeah, I agree with that. They may double down. I don't know if they'll double down on the VR part, but they would double down on the Labo part, maybe. But like I said, I just don't think this is going to do particularly well. It'll make them some money, but it's I think going to be just another yeah, we tried this, let's move on. Kind of situation. And another thing that I've noticed with it is, uh, you know, a lot of these people, especially like some of the influencers in the industry, they talk about buying Labo and the, the, the biggest aspect of it to them is building it with their kids. Yeah. So they're going to, you know, that's probably Nintendo's biggest allure and why they've sold these units is because you buy this, you know, it's cheap, you know, it's just a little gimmick. Well, it's but not you're gonna, cheap. It's well, not cheap. cheap. But what I mean, cardboard is cheap. It's your yeah, to you it's not cheap, but yeah, yeah. Um, you, you know, you but you're buying this. You know, it's a gimmick. But the reason you're buying it is because you get to do it with your children. But you, you get know, to put it together, and then you get to do this experience where, it, to us, yeah, the VR experience is pretty light and probably going to be pretty shitty. But to a six year old or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It's going to be mind blowing. So you, you get to what? see your kid enjoy it. But you know what toy that parents already do buy for their children that they put together with them and they play with and they can keep playing with over and over again? And it's not a one-time experience? Legos. Legos. That is a multi-bajillion dollar industry. Not cardboard. Not not five-minute VR headsets. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I don't know of any other company like they could really sell cardboard for 50 60 dollars a piece and oh, i agree that that's nintendo that's definitely nintendo and i'm, I'm not knocking them for their innovation you know i still think it's fucking stupid but if people want to buy it that's their business but like i said i just don't think this is something we're going to see much of i think it's something where it's definitely not going to outlast the switch i don't even think it's going to make it you know, even another year or two like i think this is just a this was an experiment just see if, what it would do. And I think they're going to go, okay, and then move on to something else. My plan is to wait till Labo is really phased out. And mm-hmm. you, you see them at like Target for like two bucks or something. Oh, yeah. And then trying it. Well, no, this is Nintendo, so it'll be $2 off. <laughs> right, After, exactly. Yeah. How could go, I go, go try and buy you a Wii U now. They're discontinued. They're like fucking two ninety eight instead of two ninety nine. Yeah. How, how could I forget? Ugh. Uh, I, I, I get where you're coming from. But yeah, so that's Nintendo right now. I mean, hey, good on them. Good on them to jump in. Everybody, everybody's jumping on the VR bandwagon at this point. So don't know why, but you know, yep. why not? Why not them? I there's gotta, be, I just some, had there's an gotta be something. I just had an experience with something that made me want VR, and it was only to watch literally a VR interview. Really? Yeah, where like you could be like it was an interview with Sway and Eminem, and like you literally could be in the car while they were talking. That's cool. Yeah, that's kind of neat. I mean that we that has that has more applications, I think, than video games right now. Because for sure, like that would be a cool face. experience. Yeah, like, and we went. You know, my my recent experience. We went to uh, Dave and Buster's for one of our buddies' birthdays last weekend, I believe. And we did the their VR experience, which is like it's like five bucks a person, and they've got they've got the fully automated like seat that moves and shit like that. Yeah, but the actual VR experience was like a Jurassic Park experience. That was really good. Like at one point, like your, the dinosaurs right beside you, like they look good and realistic. So that application was really cool because you had the whole. And I know you won't have, you won't have this at home, but you had like the wind blowing in your face at sometimes. You know the car was moving. So certain uh, VR has its cool stuff. You know it has its 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 awesome feel to it. I like oh, it yeah. a lot. Yeah, I'm not discounting VR as a platform for something. I just don't think it's a good platform for video games, at least not right now. For entertainment, it could very much be. Dude, for the porn industry, it'd be a fucking destroyer. Oh my god. That's I'm pretty cool. sure it already <laughs> exists and it's already it like It does. It's in the like the early stages for sure. I'm sure oh, you yeah. got the VR headset, you got the 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 pussy attachment, the, the dick pocket attachment. Pussy, yeah. yeah, like we gotta definitely mark this episode yep. not safe for work. But boom. Um but, you know, you could even think about companies who would buy VR. Like, you could be in China and then somebody being in America, and you could just throw a VR headset on and everybody being in a virtual conference room. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not, I don't own a business, so that doesn't matter to me. But VR, 
does have its applications. I think yes. that yes. maybe video games is not quite there yet. No, it's unfortunately gaming technology. It's too expensive for home console use right now, and it's too limited in scope. It's definitely something that needs to be refined more. Essentially, let me tell you: if you got some, if you're rich, you hit the lottery, buy you yeah. one of those machines from Dave and Buster's. You'll love it. Um, that's all the VR news we got. Let's keep on rocking. It looks like home run contest and stage builder are coming to Smash Ultimate. Some tried and true, well, home run contest for sure. And everybody wants to build their own stage, right? That sounds cool. Yeah. But you know, people are going to build the most fucked up stage with the most <laughs> fucked up transitions. Yeah. Like you're re- literally just battling the stage, not yourself. There's going to be eight dragons flying around. The goal is to just not die. Dude, I want to. I want next time we do our uh, select start, we got to build our own stages and we had to play them. Mine's gonna That'd have no. Fun. Mine's gonna have no platforms where you can stand under. It's gonna be all a bunch of platforms you got to jump on. It's gonna be, have all kinds of crazy ass transitions. A million pokeballs falling from the sky. It's just gonna be raining pokeballs nonstop. Just raining pokeballs nonstop. Okay. The and stage builder doesn't appeal to me at all. Do you, would you do you not would you want to play on people's creative stages or not like you just don't even want to fuck with it? I just don't even want to fuck with it. I think it's a bad idea. I would want to play on them. I, I wouldn't. I, I would have at least look at it beforehand. If it looks like a garbled mess, I'm not gonna touch it. But I'm like, if this looks pretty fucking sweet, yeah. Well, but why not? like, just think about like some of the Mario Maker levels that you've seen, and uh-huh. like think about how trolly they are. So from yeah. a, like a standard view, the level will look great. Yeah. And then you're going to get in it, and then all of a sudden the stage is going to fucking go totally bonkers and bananas. And that's what I fucking want. That's what I love. You know you know my my stance on uh, Smash? I love that chaos. Mm. You guys like no. that vanilla... You guys like that vanilla-ass battlefield shit. No, I like that shit to be... I want to know the... I want to know what the fuck is happening. I don't want to have to remember 95 stage transitions. Oh man, that's where. And I don't want to have to learn. I don't want to just adapt on the fly to them. You gotta adapt on the fly, man. That's war. Jeremy's stage would like be a continuous transition. Like there would never be a time when it didn't transition. Exactly, it's just always transmorphing. And then like he'd just grab you in the middle of the transition when Bowser slam you, and then you'll end up in the fucking lava. That's Jeremy's move. It's like dropping rocks from the sky. Yeah. Oh, that's exactly rocks dropped from the sky. A million Bowsers pouncing all at once. Uh, home run thing is fun. Like, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah I do like cool. that, too. Yeah, so cool stuff. I mean, so, uh, they're going to support this game forever. I mean, it's... Yeah. They know, don't Smash have a choice. There, there's stay. nowhere to go from here with Smash. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they're just going to keep supporting this, keep bringing out characters. I mean, what's, what's the end game? Eventually, every Nintendo character ever made is going to be on Smash? I will. Probably. Or they're going to end up having to do a crossover with somebody. Yeah, and it'll probably be Microsoft. Do you guys think? Do you guys think though that uh, stage builder and home run contests are going to be free add-ons, or do you think they're going to charge for them? Uh, I wouldn't see them charging for. I don't know. Hold on. I envision maybe they'll bundle it, like you know, like you buy this whole pack and it comes with two characters, and mm-hmm. it comes with the the home run mode, and it comes with that. I, or I can see them just giving it to us. I think if they're smart, the the those would be free. You know, the the extra features charge for characters, yes. But Home Run and Stage Builder, I think, should be free add-ons. I tend to agree. And, you know, it's been a long time since uh, Smash has come out, so we don't really know. I don't know, personally, or pay attention to how Nintendo usually does their DLC. Do they usually charge for it? Um, They do. They don't do a whole lot of free stuff, though. Yeah, that's what I I mean, Piranha Piranha Pent Plant was free, obviously, if you bought early. Yeah. But I don't know about, like, I don't know about, like, extra stages and stuff. I mean, this isn't a stage, it's a mode. But at the same time, this is supposed to be Smash Ultimate. It's supposed to be a combination of all the Smashes, and these are two things that were in previous Smashes. So I'm hoping that in their mind, they're like, we just couldn't get in there in time, so we're going to add it for free, and they're not going to try and double dip. You know? Not that I wouldn't That's buy what I it. Hope to. Not that I wouldn't buy it if it's reasonably priced. I'm not going to pay, like, you know, 10, 20 bucks for it. You I think know? it would be 9.99 if they did it. If it's not ninety nine though, it should probably come with like a character or something. Let me play as the uh, the duffel bag, the the punching bag thing. That'd yeah, be that cool. would be funny. Yeah, <laughs> he awesome. turns out he's just OP as shit. Like every hit he does is, is just a fucking you know one shot. Or yeah, That's or you can just project like your percentage back. Oh, dude, what if what if every every uh, hit he does is a one shot, but every hit he receives is a one shot? 
There oh, we go. that sucks. Well, that's yeah. just like a sudden death. Yeah, it's just like one hit or one hit kill. Exactly, it's like sudden death, but like just for him. He's always sudden death. He's always sudden death mode. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. So yeah, we'll keep out. Hopefully, they give it to us for free. We all want free shit, so you know. Um, the division two is going to be ninety two gigs. That is huge. That's fucking massive. insane, and it's not so, any smaller with the disc. Yeah, it's like ninety with the disc. Weren't you saying? So eighty eight maybe. I think you know clear. If you're planning a division, you might want to clear some stuff off. If you don't got you know, if you're running low on space, and I'm sure glad I'm not playing division. I ain't got ninety two gigs left. And you bought a two terabyte hard drive. I know. I keep having to delete shit. I already got a mediocre game taking up 90 gigs on my PlayStation. I don't need another one. Oh, yeah? What's that? Final Fantasy 15. <laughs> delete yeah. it. Hell no. Yeah, you're done with it. Just delete it. No, man. I got all my Final Fantasies on there. I got a oh, thing. Like, yeah, like on my Vita, I have all the Final Fantasies on there, even though I don't play them. They eat up probably like 70% of my hard drive space on there. So nice. It's just what yeah, I but have do. you uploaded like your saves to the cloud? Yeah, but I like to actually have the game there. Oh. Why? You're never going to go back and play it. I know, but it's just... He might. Jeremy it's, might. It's He's symbolic. Got a guy. I might just cut it on one day. That is actually true. I might just get back in there one day. He's like, I don't want to play Final Fantasy VI. Um, so, yeah. Be, just remember that. Cause that's a big game. Which makes me happy, because that means there's a lot of shit in the game. That, I was gonna is say, it going to be does, good shit? Hopefully, that, it's got some good early reviews. I will say that does mean that it's going to have some stuff in there. It's not going to be a No Man's Sky situation where it's only 10 gigs and 40 quadrillion yeah, like planets. Biggest game in the world, 10 gigs. That's scary. <laughs> uh, remote play for the iOS is out on the newest launch. Um, I got to actually try it out. I was going to ask. It is cool. Okay. How's the uh, frame rate? It felt good. I mean, it didn't feel like a lot of lag. Um. I was on. I was at my wife's uh, parents' house, my in-laws' house, and they live out in the country, so it's they don't really have. There's not good internet out there, so they essentially have what amounts to a 4G hotspot. And I got on, played a game, it worked fine. But then I tried to get on later that day, and it said that the 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 internet connection wasn't strong enough. So, but I mean, I was you know 30 miles away, but I was really I was I was pulling on I was playing on Carmen's profile, so essentially I was. A hundred miles away playing the PlayStation on my phone. Running up my motherfucking electric bill. I told Carmen last <laughs> night, I was like, bro, it's got to be like a hundred dollars to log on every time I'm doing that. That power bill is going to be jumping up. But uh, no, it seems cool. There's no remote support right now. I was going to say, you have to play with this virtual control? It's a virtual control. It's a little Ugh. weird, so it's a little hard. Um, but as a, if you look at it as the first attempt, it's fantastic. Hmm. What game did you play? I uh, played Divinity. Okay. Okay. Um, I just jumped into what I had. I couldn't see playing Apex. Like, yeah, you, like I a, wouldn't. A multiplayer game would be yeah, tough. I, I wouldn't want to play like Uncharted or God of War or anything with a virtual controller at least. You know, not until yeah. they get some remote control support. But if the way I look at this is like a picture is a skeleton for them to work on. I love it because the the biggest selling point for the Vita for me was the remote play. Oh yeah, the fact that you can, and I'm sure it's going to come to Android, and I'm sure they're going to continue to to update and work on. It. I mean, it takes a long time to get a, like to connect and everything. It takes probably about a minute or two. It goes through and like verifies and connects. So once they get all these kinks worked out and get some features in there and get some controller support, man, it's going to be a pretty cool feature. Be- you can to play your PlayStation on your iPad or whatever, your tablet. I was gonna, yeah, I was going to say, it'd be cool on tablet, I could say. Not so much on a phone, but your tablet? Yeah, that'd be pretty sweet. Oh, yeah, like, think think if you're, you know, you're in, you're at home, you're sitting on the couch, and, I don't know, your wife wants to watch TV, and you want to play the PlayStation, and somebody's watching TV, you know, a kid's watching TV upstairs, you just throw it on your uh, laptop there, or throw it on your tablet there, whatever you got to do. Or just play my Switch. <laughs> Or just play your switch. Yeah, I mean that's why that's why the switch is so valuable. Like you yeah, just nailed it. Like this is like that's this why is perfect. Mine. And Jeremy's not even married. He doesn't have to worry about somebody wanting to watch no. TV other but, than himself. I'm not gonna lie, that's what I do. I like I'm watching something on TV, but at the same time I kinda wanna play like, you know, a little fucking Odyssey or something. So I'll just like boom, pop that on there. Makes sense, dude. Yeah. Makes total sense. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. Uh last but not least. They announced the Xbox One S digital only edition coming out this year. 
Um, this is Xbox's first attempt at a discless console. There's no disc port. Um, they're giving an option to exchange physical games for the digital games. So they're trying to move hard to the cloud gaming. I wouldn't say I think you. I wouldn't call it cloud gaming. Now that's different. All right, so they're trying to move hard to digital. Yeah, there you go. If it was cloud gaming, we would we would be having a much deeper conversation. Um, yes, I, I should say that you can you actually have these games on your console. Yeah, I mean it's I mean it's I'm all digital at this point. I mean I have Overwatch as a disc and it stays in my PlayStation. Um, but other than that, I mean I fully I fully support this move. It's um going to be not well received by people like Jeremy who like to mm-hmm. collect games. I have, don't a, wrong, have a collection. Don't get me wrong though, I absolutely understand the appeal of this though. But they're gonna have to I know they probably only have like at max a terabyte hard drive, but people who get this, they're gonna have to get bigger. They're gonna yeah, have to get like two the biggest hard drive you can get because it's gonna get eaten up fast. Just yeah, but it's gonna fast. open them up to A, they're gonna I think they already have two SKUs for it, so I'm sure it's a five hundred gig and a terabyte. It will open them up to selling hard drives or you know, hard drive swap kits. Um, I'm sure it will support externals. I don't know oh, if yeah, the Xbox they, does currently. Uh, the Xbox, Xbox did does. out the gate. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, so like they'll be supporting externals. Like you can, you know, build up a pretty sizable library and mm-hmm. not really have to worry. And external hard drives are quite cheap. Inter- internal hard drives aren't that expensive either. I mean, I don't know I, what exactly the Xbox uses. I know that for my PlayStation, I've got a two terabyte. It cost me like eighty bucks for an. Yeah, how much? Like eighty for two terabytes. Yeah, that's that's relatively cheap when yeah. you got to think yeah. like two terabytes five years ago probably would have ran you four hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. And then I got like an external also for eighty bucks, but unfortunately the PlayStation Four does not do well with external hard drives. Uh, there's some interference with the Bluetooth controller, so it's just kind of like a backup storage system at this point. You can actually store games on your external. You just can't play games off the external. I can, but I, I, I can play them off the external, but not if I want to play well. I got you. I got you. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's, it's just good for if I don't feel like re-downloading the game, I can just back it up and, you know, put it on the system and so forth. But uh, I, I do think this is a good move by Xbox. Uh, definitely not something I'm interested in. Uh, my, only, my only real big qualm is that's the, one of the dumbest fucking names I've ever heard for a system. Xbox One S all all digital edition. Why not just go by the the name the code name and add Maverick? That sounds much much cooler. The it code names are always name. way cooler than yeah. the actual names are. You know, it's just it's just too dry. It's too too on the point. You know, I mean, I can't wait for the next Xbox, the Microsoft video game machine that plays video games and also streams movies and does internet. Tell me a console that didn't have. A worse name than the code the code name was. Uh, the like, oh, the code the names game, are the, always cooler. The GameCube, it was codenamed the Dolphin. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. so that might be a shitty one. Yeah, but yeah, like the NX that was cooler than the Switch. I don't know what the PS2, PS3. I don't know what they were codenamed though. Uh, Let's see if I either. can find those. Real yeah, quick. I want to see. Yeah, that look too. those up. Nintendo generally like oh dude the Nintendo Wii its fucking its fucking codename was awesome. It was called the Revolution. Nice. Yeah. The Atari 400 was candy. That's kind of stupid. Then the rest of the Ataris had women, like woman names, Colleen, Stella, and Pam. Okay. Sega, the Game Gear was Mercury. Genesis was Mark V. Saturn was Jupiter. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, they went with planet themes. Yep. Venus was the Nomad. Mars was the 32X. Uh, Nintendo, the Dot Matrix game. It's a Game Boy. Project Reality, Ultra 64 was the N64. Atlantis was a Game Boy Advance. The Dolphin and N2000 were the GameCube. Nitro for the DS. Revolution Ooh, for the Wii. Oh, Project Cafe for the Wii U. Yeah, Project see, Cafe Ca- is kind of whack. Yeah, Cafe's, so Wii U is pretty bad too. So The PlayStation and was the PSX. That's the PlayStation cool. Move was the Arc. That's cool. The PlayStation yeah. Vita was the... NGP, the next generation portable, and the mm. PlayStation 4 was the Orbis. I kind of like Orbis. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Um, hold on. Yeah, they, Xbox you're on, you're on Giant Bombs article? Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Xbox had a bunch. Mars, Verve, TAC. Verve is kind of uh, cool. Xbox 360 was Xenon. Ooh, that's cool. Connect was Project Natal. Ooh, I like that one too. And the looks like the one was Durango. I don't remember that. Durango. I guess they didn't codename the PS2 and PS3. Yeah, I don't see. I think they were just like too obvious. Like we're we're not getting off this bandwagon. Right. I'm guessing the PS2 was just codenamed Dollar Sign. Cause that thing printed some fucking cash. Yeah, I'm looking on their Wiki page now for the PS2, and I don't see anything about their their name in the history. Oh well, the best selling game on the PlayStation Two was Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. San Andreas, yep, absolutely. Cool deal. Well, that's all the news we got. Did we skip anything? Did we forget anything? Uh, nope, not on my list. Oh, all right, Google, we the Google controller. Oh, yeah, so I actually saw something. There's a Google controller going around, but I saw something today that said it was fake. Oh, Yeah, I, I think it's fake. That thing looks so crispy. I thought it looked good. I All right, it looked like an it. Xbox controller. Let me it double, was yeah. Xbox-like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It looks there's only so, so much you can do with a controller these days. Yeah, unless you want to do, like, a, a Wii controller or some crap like that. Yeah, I mean, the... I mean the Fucking switches pro controller reminds me of the Xbox controller. It looks it looks just like an Xbox controller. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a post online that was revealed based on mockups from their past patents. Damn it. Well, Which sucks because they do look cool. Hashtag fake news. So yeah, I guess uh, with uh, with that fakeness debunked, it's time for a super fun. All right, boys. You guys are up. I'm pretty sure I got spiggity spanked last week. Yep. And Cam is our champion. The only question I'm a, is... I'm a paper shredder and Jeremy is wet paper. I was just saying, the only question is how shitty of a role will I get? All right. Well, Cam, you get to decide whether you want to pick your character first or not. No, let Jeremy go first. I'm a, All right. I'm out a of five, host. my man. Uh, Number four. You are a hobo. Uh, here we go. All right, I'm going to do number two. I, I, I want one, one question. Since I'm a hobo, I get to be I be, I get to be uh, that badass hobo from uh, Shoot 'em Up. You know the main I character. I have not seen Shoot 'em. Have I seen Shoot 'em Up? All right, Jeremy, give me a 20 second rundown of what he does. Uh, he is a uh, ex assassin. He is insane with a gun. He can kill guy with a carrot. So, All right. Yep. Cam, you're All a right. samurai. Okay. All right. Get some powers. So you're a badass hobo assassin and I'm a samurai. All right. So the samurai, his entire body is very sticky. Okay. And he has scissor hands. Okay. okay. And I'm going to cool. interpret that as he has hands like Edward scissor hands. Uh, I'm fine with that. Okay. So essentially my weapons are my hands. Yeah. Okay. That's still pretty cool though. All yeah. right. So the hobo can become any animal Ooh. and throws ninja stars. Nice. I like this. I got fi- I got I got a I got a fight here. I got All fight. right. Our scenario is going to be all players draw and play two new attributes from the deck. Now all it doesn't right. say you discard your attributes. Uh, so we're going to add on to these. Yes, yeah, so you okay. guys get two new powers each. Okay. Nice. Okay. You guys okay. good with that? Yes. yes. All right. The samurai is adding armed with a harpoon gun. Okay. Okay. And throws spears. Damn. Okay. Okay. Pretty badass samurai. Yeah. Just don't screw me. (laughs) The hobo is getting duplicate one of your opponent's attributes. Okay. So you can decide after we get your second one. Yeah. And your other one is you're 10 stories tall. Fuck. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to duplicate the spear gun. Okay. All right. Hey, we got some good powers here. Wow. Yeah, you guys are nice. eating up a lot of cards here. All right. In our location is a giant ball pit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Now, this becomes, is it a human-sized giant ball pit, or is it a well, ball pit that can accommodate a 10-story tall? 
I, 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 if we, if we remember, we had to make that uh, gun shop accommodate a ten foot tall leprechaun. So, so well, yeah, I'm it's assuming just this be has a to accommodate ball me. Pit. All yeah. right, it's huge. Okay, bunch of balls. Yep. Cam. All right, Jeremy, you... you're going first, buddy. I'm going first. Okay. All right, let me bust out my old timer. All right, Jeremy, you ready? Yo. In three, two, one, go. All right, well, right off the bat, I have an absolutely amazing size advantage here. I'm 10 feet tall. Uh, your little knife hand, your little scissor hands aren't going to do very much damage, if at all. They might be little scratches to me. Uh, your spear gun, you're throwing spears. It's going to be like throwing toothpicks at me. Uh, I can turn to any animal. All I got to do is turn into something nice and heavy, like a rhinoceros, a hippo, uh, and just crush you. If I turn to a rhinoceros, heavily armored, nothing you got is going to be able to get through my armor. All I got to do is stomp on you, crush you. Or I can turn into a hippo, just roll around the ground, again, crushing you, ain't going to get much. We're in a ball pit, you're not going to have very good traction. I'm 10 feet tall, I'm in the ball pit, but it's going to be easier for me to get around. Uh, like I said, you're going to have a limited range of movement. I'm just going to just roll on you, stomp you, throw a spear gun at you. Oh god, I'll have a giant spear gun, he'll just hit you and just destroy you. He'll just turn you into fucking red mush. Done. Alright, 58 seconds. Cam, hit him with it. In three, two, one, go. All right, although not as stealthy as the ninja, the samurai were stealthy warriors, so I'm using this ball pit to my advantage. You're so big, I'm going to be slithered my way behind you and trying to attack you from behind. I'm going for your Achilles tendon. Even though you're 10 feet tall, I'm still going to be able to slice your tendons. Your skin is still soft. If you turn into an animal... That's fine. I'm going to be diving down into these balls. I'm basically going to be hitting you with a hit, stick, and move. So I'm going to hit you and go away. Now, you turn into a giant hippo, I'm going to jump on top of you. I'm so sticky, I'm going to start crawling on you. I'm going for your eyeballs. I'm taking my scissor hands, digging into your eyeballs. If I can dig deep enough, I'm going straight into your brain and kill you. Your hide's tough, but your eyes aren't. Going for the brain, going for the eyes. I'm going to use this stickiness at this ball pit to my advantage. Hit, stick, and run. You turn to animals, you don't know where I'm going to be in that ball pit. You have no idea. It's huge, and my size is the advantage in this. All right, another 58 seconds. It's really Ooh. going to come down to the rebuttals on this All one. right. So okay. you have 30 seconds, Jeremy, All right. and go. First of all, samurai were not stealthy warriors. They were proud warriors who wanted to fight their opponents one-on-one -on -one and in a fair fight. They do not fight dirty. They fight clean and with honor. That's going to be your downfall. I'm a hobo. I don't give a fuck. It's any means necessary. I'll kill you for a fucking sandwich. Like I said, I turn to a rhinoceros. They are covered in fucking scales. There's no way any of your weapons are going to even pierce it. You're not going to be able to get up on me. We're in a finite area. I can just crush you. All I got to do is sit down. You got nowhere to run. Even in that ball pit. All I got to do is just roll around. You're dead. You're not going to be able to avoid that. You're not going to be able to get on top of me. Cam, 30 seconds. And go. So, yes, you, they were proud warriors, but in this case, they would fight smart and use this ball pit to their advantage. Uh, they would use the stealth of the ball. So, let picture this. When you jump this giant ball pit, you're never going to touch the bottom. I can maneuver to the bottom because I'm so small. You couldn't get to the bottom. Again, if I use my stickiness, I'm going to be able to climb on top of you and go for your weak points, your throat, your eyes, whatever I need to do. I also have my, uh, my toothpicks, as you call them. I can shoot for your eyes, your weak points. I'm going to have crazy aim. All right. As I clean up. So quite an interesting fight. I do believe both of you were kind of tied going into it. Um, the size is definitely an advantage and a disadvantage all at the same time. Um, depending on the animals you used, in your case you used a rhino. Um, and you used a hippo. The hippo is the, the stronger of the animals in this situation. And... Um, I'm disappointed that you didn't use the stickiness against him in the sense that, like, my man's yeah, just going to be he, carrying around balls. He's going to be literally a walking, <laughs> oh, a walking ball. About that. About that. Oh, shit, you're right. So because you didn't use it, I'm not going to put that into consideration. Yeah. Um, I do think that sheer size would be enough for you to win. I mean, you got to think a 10-story size hobo is going to turn into... Um, not ten, he's not going to be a 10 story size hippo or a 10 story size rhino. I thought that's what it would be. I mean, if you convert down, you got to think about like you're standing erect and a rhino well, yeah, does I'm, not stand erect. 
Well, he's gonna yeah, he's gonna be a ten foot long rhino. That's what I mean. Yeah, so yeah. I think Jeremy takes the cake. Finally dethrones Cam. Finally. Um, it's that size that was too. Yeah, hard the to size. Get. It really is was. The thing. Honestly, like if he's in human form, I would literally just scale his back with fucking the scissor hands. That's what hands. I thought. Yeah, yeah, but this the with the he picked a hit rhino who's really tough skinned. Yeah, and then hippos like the most dangerous animal in the animal kingdom. Yep. So. Yeah, like if honestly, if I didn't have the ten foot scale, I would have played this differently. But when I got that ten foot thing, that really pro- kind of made it a little easier on me. But God, you're right though. I wish I thought about the whole stickiness in the balls That's, thing. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. You wouldn't have been like, I know we're done, but you, been wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to move. You would just been standing there like, I can't move. I'm covered in balls. Yeah, yeah like you it's, an that, average, it's an average Saturday lost, night for me. I would have lost immediately if you had thought. Yeah. That. Shit, see? Hindsight's so Jeremy comes in with a fucking dub in an Finally, actual sanctioned he breaks, battle. He breaks the streak. First one in three months. All right, Jeremy, pick your ah. unpowered fighter. One, two, or three. Uh, Number one. Number one is a musketeer. Okay. A musketeer? Yeah. Okay. Cam? I know a lot. Two. You are a wizard. Ooh. So I will be... Doctor Strange. God damn, dude. There you go. All and right. I am a secret agent. Ooh, these are all good picks. I don't know if anyone could beat Doctor Strange, though. He's I think Doctor Strange really has the advantage on this. I, even if you're like fucking James Bond, I don't think that matters much. I will say this, though. If we were going to do the fight, I think I'm out. Musketeers are strong, but come on, not compared to a fucking secret agent with modern weapons. And definitely not Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange is like he's so OP. Like if I all I gotta do is, is pull you into my world, and then you're screwed. He's like a god, basically. But let's be honest, Austin Powers has never lost. Yeah, baby, shaggy. Yeah, him. baby. He said, you might try to shag me, but I think I can get around that. I think I'd use my powers. I don't know, dude. My, uh... Got swag. Do I still have the uh, time stone? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's part of his his uh basic gear. Oh yeah, I'll just I'll just. Use the time I, I of I of Agamotto. Yeah, I could go. I could just chill out and go into time and see how many times I beat you and figure out how I beat you those times and then do That's, it. Or you just trap him in the repeat loop for the rest of time. Yeah, so I do think you win there. So good on you. Hey, eventually, Strange for eventually the we'll sanction all this shit and like keep these like unbeatable people out. But. For That's now, we'll give you your dub. Yeah, we'll we'll have to retcon some things so it's not so one yeah. in the future. But it, I mean, I guess when you can pick it, you can pick it. Hey, I'll take it. I can't wait uh, for hey, somebody that to one get time, the Megazord. That one time I picked God, the Hulk, we've never gotten that. You know? Yeah. And and yeah. I end up losing. So. Yeah. Well, who's you fought me? But what was? No, it? no, 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 no. It was I picked Superman, and you got yes. Playboy Billionaire. So you got Batman. No, Remember? no, it was can't. Uh, no, uh, you got Superman and Carmen got Playboy Billionaire. He got oh, Batman. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And I was the judge on that one. So I like I picked a super strong character, mm-hmm. and I lost. Yeah, because he chose the one person that could beat Superman. Batman. Right? Yeah. So the Mega Fighter is coming. Yes, the Mega did, Fighter will happen. I do think you got like a Hulk with laser, but like uh, beam saber hands, didn't you? At one point, Yo, that hands? would be insane. That but I think I think also you lost that one. I lost my Hulk one, and I don't remember how. Yeah, I think it was to me, if I can remember. I just can't remember the fight. Anyone knows, please post. <laughs> yes, leave it in the comments. All right, well, uh, if that's it, if nothing else, somebody get us out of here. I don't care who does it. It's All not right. me. All right, well, if you haven't been watching Select Star, it's back. Dr. Mario is up. Blades of Steel is up. It's you're going to get a lot of content of uh, me and Jeremy, and then we're going to follow up with the things that Cam made it through before he got the flu. And uh, definitely like all those videos, leave some comments, let us know what you want us to play. And like always, play on and stay. Hello? Average. Peace.